What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to find the zeros or the solutions of a polynomial function that has some imaginary solution. Okay, so here we have f of x is equal to x to the fifth plus x cubed minus 2x squared minus 12x plus 8, right? So the first thing I want to point out here is look at the biggest exponent. It's a 5, right? So that means we're going to have 5 solutions. Okay, the biggest exponent in your polynomial tells you how many solutions you have to have. Okay, so as you can see, this polynomial uh, looks like it'd be pretty difficult to factor, right? So there's two big steps that we have to follow. The first one is just dividing p over q to find some possible solutions. And then the second one is checking your solutions using synthetic division, right? So let's start with step one, p over q. So what does that mean? So p, this number on top, are the factors of your constant, right? The number at the very end. So here is a positive eight. The factors of positive eight or in other words, the numbers that divide evenly into 8. So those would be positive or negative 1, positive or negative 2, positive or negative 4, and positive or negative 8. All right? And then we're going to divide those by q. And your q numbers are the factors of your leading coefficient. So here you can see our leading coefficient, we basically have a 1 right there, right? So the factors of 1 are positive or negative one, right? Those are the only two. So here P over Q would just be these positive and negative numbers up here divided by these two numbers down here, okay? So what would be our possible solutions? So let's work these out. So uh, first we have positive one divided by positive one, that's just equal to one, right? Uh, positive two divided by positive one, that's equal to two, right? Positive four divided by one is four and we have eight, right? The other way we can evaluate these is saying negative one divided by positive one, right? That would be uh, negative one. Uh, negative two divided by positive one, that would be negative two, right? So we'd get negative four and negative eight, right? Now, it doesn't matter how else we mix up the positives and the negatives, right? These are just all the possible solutions we have now, okay? And the way that you check each number or each solution is by using synthetic division. Okay, so I'm just gonna check this first number, so it's just a positive one, right? So I wanna test uh, that x is equal to one. So again, we're gonna do this using synthetic division. So the first thing you wanna do is just write or draw your big synthetic division symbol. Uh, whatever x is equal to goes out here on top, and then the numbers that we list up here on this top row are gonna be just your coefficients that you have up here, right? So it's going to be a positive one. Uh, here you can see we skip over x to the fourth, right? We don't have an x to the fourth term, but we do need to include it down here. So we're just going to put a zero uh, for x to the fourth. So after that, x cubed, uh, this is just a one, right? x squared is negative two. Here we have negative 12 and positive eight, right? So then we're going to have one, zero, one, negative two, negative 12, and positive eight, right? Now, if you need a refresher on synthetic division, I'll link a video to that in the card above, but here I'm just gonna keep going. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is just bring this first coefficient straight down, write it down here, right? So then we have one times one, which is one. And then remember, we're gonna add all these numbers down here to all the numbers up here, right, vertically. So zero plus one, that's equal to one, okay? So then again, we're gonna go one times one, that's equal to one. One plus one is equal to two. One times two is equal to two. Negative two plus two is equal to zero. One times zero is zero. Negative 12 plus zero is negative 12. Oops, negative 12. And one times negative 12 is negative 12. So then eight minus 12 is pause, or sorry, negative four, okay? So these are the coefficients of our new polynomial, right? This is our remainder. This is our constant. This is our x to the first term. This is our x squared, right, x cubed, and x to the fourth. Now, the main thing you want to look for here is the remainder. So you want to look to see if your remainder is equal to zero. Now, if it is, that means the number that we tested over here is a solution. It is a zero to the polynomial, okay? But if you get anything other than zero, so like here we have a negative four, then that means the number we tested is not a solution, right? So is it equal to zero? No, 
Okay, so that means that x is equal to one is not a solution. It's not a zero. Okay, so then we have to just test the next point. So then we would test positive two here. All right, so let's test x is equal to two. All right, so we'll put a two on the outside right here. Right, we'll write our coefficients again. So one, zero, one, negative two, negative 12, and eight. And the first thing we'll do is bring this one down. So then we get one times two is two. So then here we get two, two times two is four, one plus four is five, two times five is 10, negative two plus 10 is eight, two times eight is 16. Here we get a uh, positive four, right? And here we get uh, two times four, which is eight. Okay, and I just realized I made a mistake from the beginning. Uh, for our polynomial over here, this last little bit, instead of plus eight, this should actually be minus eight. Okay, uh, so that doesn't change anything. That changes this right here, right? We would have had a minus eight right here. So minus eight, minus 12, that would have been negative 20. So still that remainder is not zero. But now we have a negative eight right here. Okay, uh, so then negative eight plus eight is equal to zero, right? So then here you can see our remainder does equal zero. So that means the X, the solution that we tested is a solution, right? So X is equal to two is a solution. Okay, great, now what do we do? So the next thing that we can do is list out all our coefficients with our terms, with our variables, okay? So remember, this is the constant, right? This is the X term, this is X squared, X cubed, and x to the fourth. So our first term right here would just be one x to the fourth, or in other words, just x to the fourth. Uh, here, positive two x cubed, right? So plus two x cubed, then plus five x squared, plus eight x plus four. Okay, so this is our new polynomial function. Okay, now this is again, not easy to factor. So we're gonna have to go through the p divided by q thing one more time and do the synthetic division one more time, right? So here, uh, P over Q, right? So P is the factors of your constant, the four, right? So here, this is gonna be uh, equal to plus or minus one, two, and four. Okay, and that's gonna go over Q, and Q is this number, right? The factors of our leading coefficient, which is just a one again. So we're just gonna have plus or minus one right there. Okay, so then our possible solutions again here would be uh, positive one divided by positive one, which is one, right? Positive two divided by positive one is two. Same thing for four. And then we could do negative one divided by positive one, right? So then that would give us negative one. We would get negative two and negative four. Okay, so again, we're just gonna test some of these numbers and see if we get any solutions, right? And one little trick I wanna point out here is if you look at your polynomial up here, all the coefficients are positive, right? Positive one, positive two, five, eight, and four. So that means the positive numbers that are your possible solutions here are probably not solutions, okay? In this case, it'd probably be one of your negative numbers. So let's start with negative one, all right? So let's test uh, x is equal to negative one, all right? So we're gonna have negative one again on the outside. We're gonna write that like that. And then our leading coefficients this time are going to be, looks like one, two, five, eight, and four, okay? So we're gonna bring this number down, right? So here we're gonna have negative one times one, which is negative one. Here we get a positive one, so then negative one times one is negative one. Here we get positive four. Negative one times four is negative four. Here we get positive four. So negative one times positive four is negative four. So then here we get zero, right? So this is the remainder, the constant, x, x squared, and x cubed, right? But again, the remainder right here, the most important thing is zero, right? So that means the number that we just tested, x is equal to one, or sorry, negative one, is also a solution. Okay, great, so we're gonna write down those two solutions, right? So we know that x is equal to two, and negative one so far, right? So again, we're gonna just write this all out with our leading coefficients and our terms. So here, one x cubed is the same thing as just x cubed. Then we have plus x squared plus four x plus four, 
okay? So this is now our function. Now here, this is finally at a point where we can actually factor this somewhat easily, all right? And we can do that by grouping, okay? So I'm going to factor these two together, and then I'm gonna factor these two together. Okay, so then here, uh, x cubed plus x squared, we can factor out an x squared from both of them, right? So then inside the parentheses, we're gonna be left with x plus one, and then uh, in this set of parentheses, I can factor out a positive four from both of them, right? So plus four, and then in parentheses, we're gonna be left with x plus one, okay? Now you can see we have the same thing in these parentheses, right? x plus one, x plus one, so that's one of our factors. So this is gonna be equal to uh, x plus one, and then our other factor would just be made up of the two terms we factored out, right? So this x squared and this positive four, so then we're gonna have x squared plus four like that, okay? Now remember our other two solutions were x is equal to two and negative one, right? So then our other two factors that we're gonna write here are x minus two and x plus one, right? You always wanna take the opposite sign of what you have here, right? Because to solve for these factors, you just set them equal to zero, so here, x minus 2 is equal to 0, so then here you can see that x is equal to positive 2, right? So x is equal to positive 2, so that's why we took the opposite sign. And same thing over here, that's why we take the opposite sign there, okay? Just want to be clear about that. Now the last thing that we have here is this x squared plus 4 that we need to solve for. So again, to solve for this, all you need to do is set it equal to 0, right? So then I'm just going to write it up here. So x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. Uh, here we'll subtract 4 from both sides, so we get x squared is equal to negative 4. Now, there's obviously no number that you can square where it would give you a negative answer, right? So to solve for x over here and get rid of this exponent, we need to take the square root of both sides, right? Now, again, there's no such thing as the square root of a negative number, so this is where the imaginary solutions come in, right? So uh, first of all, this square root and squared exponent cancel out, so then we just have an x on this side, so we get that x is equal to the square root of negative four, which is equal to plus or minus, and the square root of just four is equal to two, right? So we'll put a two right there, and since it's negative in there, that's what makes it imaginary, okay? So then here we get two solutions, right? x is equal to positive two i, and x is equal to negative two i. Okay, so then if you want to write all these factored out, it would be x plus 1, and then this one would be x, so we have two solutions, right? Plus 2i and minus 2i, so we could just write plus 2i times x minus 2i, and then x minus 2 and x plus 1, all right? So again, this is f of x, right? So f of x is equal to all these factors multiplied together. Now to find each of the zeros, remember just set them equal to zero, right? So in this first one, we'll see that x is equal to negative one. Here, x would be equal to negative two i. Here, x is equal to positive two i. Here, x is equal to positive two. And here, x is equal to negative one, right? So then we have our five zeros, our five solutions here, right? One, two, three, four, five. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.